What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at Lady Nerva Darkvane on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. And for this fight we went with the just nuke forehead strat. Meaning two tanks, three healers and 15 DPS. Immunity classes are a big bonus, especially DPS, DKs and warriors, because on this fight AMS and spell reflect also counts as an immunity for a certain mechanic. This is not mandatory by any means, it just makes the encounter easier, which I'll go over in a bit. So what's new on Mythic? Apart from everything being scaled up, there's the zero-sum game. On Mythic, any anima drained by opening a container is transferred to all closed anime containers, but you don't really need to care about that with this strat. Next out is the Hidden Desire. Whenever Inerva casts Expose Heart on the tank, two mirror images-ish spawn some Somewhere around the tank, and after a few seconds they will dash through the tank and the tank needs to face them before they hit him. If you fail to look the image straight in the eye or slightly sideways, you'll take around 25k shadow damage and you'll get an extra stack of exposed heart. Which is not awesome, hurts like hell. We swapped on two stacks of exposed heart, you could potentially swap on every exposed heart to reduce tank damage, since when you swap on two you will tank her during one of the images, meaning you might get smacked in the back. Following this, you have simple geometry, which is you get an extra orb to deal with during sins and suffering. Still three players that get linked, but four orbs you need to connect if you will. We'll always target one healer, two DPS, one player will always have to big brain their line through two orbs while the other two players just deal with it like on heroic. Just keep communicating, X needs to move closer or further away. Simple geometry. On mythic, you'll also get three adds that spawn up from two, one specter and two manifestations. Stations. Now, if you pop an immunity, AMS or spell reflect right before the debuff that spawns adds, which is concentrated anima, you won't spawn an ad if she targets you. Now the RNG with this is you probably won't or really shouldn't have 20 DKs or warriors in the raid so you can't immune them all, or guarantee it. This is simply to make the fight easier if you're lucky. However, you don't need luck to follow me on Twitch. With that said, let's hop into it. Cue the picture! On pole, you want to tank Nerva where she spawns. Spawns. Raid loosely stacked around boss, throughout the fight you'll need to move the boss around the room as it will fill up with anime pools. We started on skull and moved counterclockwise around the room when needed. The point of this nuke strat is to out DPS the containers filling. So instead of opening containers all the time and shifting around that anime, we just let them fill up and just dealt with the mechanics we got. You will however open one container briefly, but more on that soon. Keep in mind that any timers I list here can change depending on your raid DPS, as you will reset some timers every 25%. So on pull we popped everything, lust, pot, cooldowns, as there's really nothing going on at this point. You'll get one set of sin orbs to connect and one set of bottles to soak. Now like I said, connecting the orbs just need to be big brained. And high mobility classes should soak the anime bottles if they can. Roughly 45 seconds into the fight you'll get your first set of adds, unless you manage to push boss to 75% before and skip them. If you get this set of adds, have every single immunity in your raid use their immunity right before this and pray for less adds. If that fails, have every player with the red circle around him move close to the boss. One tank needs to tank and be in melee range of the Spectre ad, and you'll need an interrupt rotation with backups for both the Condemn ad's manifestations. They cannot get casts off. You'll need two interrupters per ad and a backup or two in case they're away doing mechanics. <laughs> DPS focus should be on the ads while they're up. Around the 130 mark, we click the fourth container, which is the ad container or concentrated anima. It was around 17 percent at this point. Leave it open until drained then close it. This will cause the container of desire and bottled anima to hit 33 percent. So anima bottles now leave puddles and you have to deal with shared cognition. A few seconds later you'll get your second set of adds. Use only short immunities on this so AMS and spell reflect. Nuke down any adds that spawn and keep condemn adds interrupted. When the second set of adds are dealt with we started moving boss counterclockwise along the wall towards where we have our circle mark. 
Make sure that the raid stays loosely stacked near boss near the wall or edges as you want to keep the middle clear from puddles as much as possible. You'll also start getting anima web, so beams between the sin orbs around this time. And following this, roughly 3 minutes into the fight you'll get your third set of adds. Again, short immunities here and pray. Deal with them the same way as before. Boss will now also bounce her anime bottles. Bounces will always bounce towards the middle of the room, which is why we're at the edges. And keep moving boss down if you're running out of space due to the anima pulls. Keep dealing with bouncy bottles and sin orbs, and around the 340 mark both the container of sin and desire will hit the 66% mark, meaning rotating beams around the sin orbs as well as a change of heart on the tank mechanic. The beams really really hurt so do avoid them and tanks simply move away a bit for the explosion from change of heart. Roughly 4 minutes in here you'll get your 4th set of adds, unless you luck out and fully immune unit like we did. Use short immunities here as well. Now around the 5 minute mark you'll get your last set of adds. This time the add container will have reached 33% so add targets will be rooted for 10 seconds. Things like tiger's lusts etc can be used to break it. Or raid can just stack up near boss before the concentrated anima cast. On this set of ad, the last set of ads, you want everyone with an immunity to use it before the concentrated anima, and again, pray for less or no ads. Having all three ads plus all other containers above 66% will make it hectic. For sure doable, but yeah, if you can avoid one or two ads here with immunes, then all the better. And from here on out, it's just a race against the containers, if you will. If one fills up completely, you die. So that's your enrage, if you will. If you're behind a bit on DPS, you could potentially open one more container during the last 10% or so, just to get a little bit of extra time, but it's a lot simpler if you kill it before you need to do any of that. Few final words, like I mentioned at the start, timings change depending on when you hit the 25% mark. You can skip adds and other mechanics because of this, but it also makes it harder to give you an exact timestamp of everything we did. For example, on our kill we skipped first set of adds, so we got 4 sets in total, but managed to fully immune the third, so all in all we got 3 set of adds to deal with. Other than that there's not much to say. There's no big overlaps or weird RNG other than if you're trying to immune adds. It's just one mechanic after the other and it piles on a bit at the end of the fight. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just nuke for it! If you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron and get access to the Stanky Discord, where you can find Raid Week or us, healing notes, etc, etc. And don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell. I'm also streaming all of our progression on Twitch, so make sure to check that out Mondays and Tuesdays. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.